Good morning, all. So myself, Varsha. Uh, I'm working as assistant professor at uh, Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pidam. Uh, I'll be chairing uh, two sessions today. Uh, so first, uh, we have two uh, uh, paper presentation. Uh, one, first presentation for 15 minutes, and second, for 25 minutes. So first, we have software development waste emits COVID-19 pandemic an industry study. So I would invite the speaker. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dheeraj. And my co-authors are Sayan Rutsar and Professor Raghu Reddivai. We are from Software Engineering Research Center from Tripurati, Hyderabad. And our work is uh, the study of software development waste amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, an industry study. So according to Sedano and his team, they define software development waste as any activity involved with product software product development that consumes resources but creates no value for the customers. Okay. <clears throat> that creates no value for the customers. So there are different types of software development waste. Some of the commonly occurring ones are building the wrong feature, which usually happens when there is a gap between the environment and what is built. And mismanaging the backlog usually happens when there is a backlog inversion where people prioritize tasks that are of low priority when there are uh, tasks of higher priority in the queue. Uh, similarly, rework happens due to technical debt. Exchange is cognitive, also lo load also happens due to technical debt, waiting and multitasking, knowledge loss. These are all different types of software development waste. So the pandemic. The pandemic introduced changes that were not expected before. So this earlier remote work was something that was a choice. But because of the pandemic, it became a mandate. And because of this, the pandemic enforced work from home situation had consequences that we were not really prepared for. So we focused on software development waste during the COVID-19 pandemic, that is between 2020 and 2022. So first we wanted to understand what was the evolution of software development waste during this period. Were there any metrics or measures that was, that was used by the organizations to understand the software development waste during this period? And how did the teams manage the waste when it happened? So our study setup was in two folds. The first was an online survey followed by focused interviews. In the online survey, we had 615 participants. Uh, all of them we reached out through social media platforms and local agile summits. And uh, this happened in 2020. And the focused interviews happened in 2022. So first, we again reached out to the participants who showed interest in the interviews. So there were 70 people who showed interest. And then 31%, 31 people accepted to finally participate in the interviews. And the gap between these two is primarily to let the teams adopt to the situations that, were, that they were not used to before. So in the online survey, we have captured the demographics. That is, that we'll, I'll go through each of them eventually. The demographics, their experiences with the software development waste, then their organizational approaches to manage them. And in the focus on interviews, again, uh, it's, it's a very specific questions to understand their understanding of waste. So I'll get back to that also again. So in the survey demographics, we have captured working group, their role, and their work experience. So this distribution shows that we kind of captured the responses from a variety of people. So this is the first important question. So this is to understand if they had experienced any waste before the pandemic. We can see that there is a, an equal, kind of an equal number of people who are agreeing and disagreeing, and they're on either side of neutral, that's saying they have experienced waste before the pandemic. And then, if they, we asked if they, are ex, if they experienced any increase in the waste during the pandemic. So you, you probably can see it, but it's, it's a very small bunch, like handful of people who are saying it's significantly increased, but the rest of them are either saying it barely increased or it did not increase at all. And NA is for the people who whose role was not really suitable to understand or experience software development waste. But this, uh, this is where uh, there was a discrepancy in that. So here we asked for the causes, if they experienced any cause of the software development waste. So uh, you can see that miscommunication among teams, cost of, uh, affects the cost, affects the timeline, add, adds backlog. These are all causes of the different types of software development waste. But here, here we can see that just a handful of people disagree that there was any of this that happened because 
an increase in the after the pandemic but most of them say that they agree or strongly agree that yeah there was they were experiencing this with the pandemic so this was our motivation for the follow up interviews here we could see that there was uh, they were experiencing the cause and effect without a prior association or the knowledge of the term software development waste specifically so we wanted to start with what is their understanding of software development waste in the interviews and during the interviews we captured uh, people from eight nationalities seven seven domains and they belong to five different roles so from the pandemic to address our first research question we have seen that people were facing backlog mismanagement ineffective communication wait time knowledge loss unused artifacts rework and the absence of a home office so overall we realized that there was a significant increase in different in all types of waste where a few more than the others and it also introduced new challenges because of the absence of a structured home office which is in terms of the absence of infrastructure yes yes sir so in our interviews we had multiple people some of them they were working remote even before the pandemic some of them were working uh, like co located in the same offices before the pandemic so those who were working remote they also told that they were facing challenges because of absence of home office so that not just themselves but the teams that they were also working with so metrics <clears throat> with regards to the metrics everybody were using the performance indicators to map it or use it as a proxy to waste nobody had a clear definition of what waste was and ways to measure it so they were using uh, performance indicators and delivery timelines as proxy measures for software development waste so the industry does not use any direct measure for tracking and management of waste it uses individual productivity and delivery times as proxies so finally how did the teams manage waste in this unforeseen so first they started using a combination of strategies which were not entirely the traditional agile strategies so rigorous stand up meetings subjective judgment scores micromanagement increase intentionally increasing investigation times prioritizing reduce reduction of technical debt and use of productivity metrics so we realized that they are using a combination of traditional practices alongside agile practices to ensure good working during the situation so in summary uh, has been an increase in all types of software development waste during the situation and lack of a home office was a new waste that was introduced because of this specific situation and there is a need of a direct measure or a metric to observe waste instead of using productivity and delivery times as proxy there needs to be awareness across various stakeholders so that it helps them better perform their roles and in our current work we are working on uh, identifying or measuring software development waste in open open source repositories for now so for now uh, we are backlog prioritization which is a type of backlog mismanagement and unused artifacts and we are using uh, github api to get these information thank you questions on a previous slide <clears throat> you had some people marked as na which you mentioned that they were not relevant yes. to the so how did you decide uh, you know which people like you know which people are not so uh, so here in the demographics you can see that some of them are categorized as other and some are some as cloud ops so cloud ops is you category of maintenance and in maintenance usually they did not experience waste but they were observing it in other participants within their team so similarly when we ask them if they have experienced waste that is when this concept of not applicable not applicable or not applicable has come in okay. yes sir it's a two year study so it started in 2020 uh, that is when we had our initial yes sir yes so those are also types of waste sir psychological distress is one of the types of waste that 
is that usually happens because of the pandemic definitely introduced the kind of stress that was never there before. There was earlier we had a barrier between personal life and professional life, and now it it just merged together. People had to take calls in their personal spaces. That introduced a lot of stress. So we are we are not uh, addressing how they have faced it, but we are just addressing if they faced it and if it has increased over time with the pandemic. Any other question? Yeah. Yes. I, uh, as a peer, sir. Yes, sir. So. Sir, so. Things uh, did change, sir, but they have changed forever. Earlier we had remote work, but now we have a hybrid situation. People are not completely going back to offices. There, there have been studies which. People are willing to quit if they are forced to come back to companies. So it, now it is completely hybrid. So I think this is something we'll have to adopt continuously. So, and yeah, there, there has been a lot of hiring and firing that also happened because of the pandemic. That also introduced stress. So a lot of factors are uh, like unexpected, and, and now it's kind of settled down. So now we are. I, I think there has to be a study around it. Yes. For now, we are focusing on measuring waste, sir. Follow up with that. Yeah, thank you. I think it's a very important topic and many lessons learned also from that. I would like to share maybe a little story uh, from the beginning of the pandemic where you can also see how many things can go wrong. So a friend of mine actually in Europe had to manage a big project and what they did is they mapped actually the way the working style he had before directly to the virtual space. So actually meeting, 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 back-to-back -back meetings. What happened, because now he didn't have to move from conference room to conference room, the meetings you know, were very tightly scheduled. And after one day, he had six hours continuous meetings. He was not able to get up from the chair anymore. So there you saw it completely went wrong because thinking now you can squeeze in more meetings into the virtual space was wrong, obviously, because they forgot the coffee breaks in between and uh, moving from space to space. So after that, they learned the lesson and gave more freedom. And then things became more efficient. So that's also my question now. Are there some lessons learned where when you look at it, mapping this to the virtual world and maybe even some efficiency boost there, uh, how to mix and match it in an optimal way, in a blended way, on the software side here, in software development. So did you find some indications of that? This could be used in a good way, blending work from home and office work and virtual meetings and face-to-face -face meetings. Yes. So to our surprise, there was just one of the interviewees who told that it was good having software going completely remote, the development process going completely remote was helpful because there was, there are times when you're working together, there is one idea that tangentially pushes you into a direction and you, uh, you start discussing about something that is not really important in the meeting. But again, that flexibility comes only when you're working together in a team. While that also leads to productivity per se for everybody or the entire project, uh, working remotely also gives the flexibility of timings with respect to when people want to join a meeting. And they also have the ability to have more clear, defined responsibilities. Instead of having ad hoc meetings and people going randomly to somebody's desk and saying, I want this change by the end of the day. Everything goes through a medium or a channel of communication. Although communication was a challenge in the beginning, eventually after it settled down in terms of uh, people understanding when the availability of their peers is, I think that is when it it was very helpful to understand. Uh, yeah, development should be done in a structured way, but taking everybody's availability into consideration. Question: uh, So, how many uh, categories of so uh, software waste is considered? So. Uh, In Sedano's work, the initial 
work, there were nine types of software development waste. But that was also taken uh, or introduced from lean software engineering. So lean software engineering has been taken from lean manufacturing. So overall, uh, there are all these types of waste in which uh, you can see that handovers, unused artifacts, uh, manager, management and organizational aspects and absence of a home office were not an in, uh, initial set. So just like uh, how we have different types of debt and technical debt, I think software development waste is also not a limited set of waste, but I think we will have new ones that might come up in the so, future. Uh, are these the popular uh, categories which we study? or? Uh, so this is a list, an exhaustive list from the literature and our study. Thank you. So can we move to next talk? Thank you.